Hello, good morning, third graders. Let me get some of our friends to come and say good morning. Good morning, good morning, everybody. It's me, Puppy. Hi, everybody. Welcome to technology class. Yes, welcome to technology class. And this is week 36. I can't even believe it. Are you guys really going into fourth grade? This is, time is going too fast. You're growing up too fast. I can't take it anymore. Every time I see you guys and you're getting so tall, I'm like, oh, no. So we miss you guys and we love you. And remember, come visit us anytime. We would love to see you. Um, okay, so guess what? We are going to be doing a review for a few minutes in the beginning of our class today, uh, reviewing our second step skills. So I know it's been a few weeks since we've done any second step lessons, but um, just a review because there is a, a brief online quiz for you to complete. So I'll be showing you that in a few minutes. But let's go over what we learned. So in the beginning of the year, we learned our skills for learning and we've been learning these since kindergarten, right? But how can we learn? Well, we have to focus our attention with our eyes, our ears, right? We have to keep our voice quiet and we have to learn how to be assertive. We talked about being assertive. How can we be assertive? Do you remember puppy? Um, we can speak clearly and calmly, and we can speak in a respectful way to get what we need. Um, if we have a question or if something is going on and we need help or we need to talk about it. Um, and there is a way to do that. You have to think about your tone of voice and how you're getting someone's attention. Yeah, those are all really good points, right? And that's the best way to communicate. We also learned how to use self-talk, right? Um, when we need to calm down or something is going on. Um, and we talk in our head, right? So we say things to ourselves like ignore distractions or stay focused, right? And these can be really helpful. Um, so empathy. Empathy we've been learning about is really understanding how someone else is feeling, right? We might look at their face for clues or their body. We might think about what's their point of view. How can I help them? And compassion is empathy in action. So that's when we really are stopping and we are saying, what can I do to help this person, right? We're not just thinking about how they're feeling. We're actually doing something about it. So um, that is something that's really important that we want to make sure um, that we uh, spend time with um, thinking about how we can show compassion to people, right? Um, and really change the world. So there we go. That's empathy. Um, and how to calm down. Uh, we did learn. So if you remember the steps, the first step to calm down is stop and use your stop signal, right? Name your feeling and then choose how you're going to calm down. You might do some breathing, counting, positive self-talk, um, whatever works for you. Hopefully you've been trying out different things and figuring out how to really calm yourself down. And then we learned about the problem solving steps. Remember S-T-E-P. Say the problem without blaming anybody. Think of solutions and they should be safe and respectful, right? Explore consequences. So what would happen if I did this or that? Pick the best solution and then make your plan, right? And so this can help us with any problem that we might be going through, right? And so this is just a reminder um, and just a review. I just, I didn't want to spend too much time on it, but let me show you the quiz. So the quiz is everybody will get a link and you'll take a look at this picture. And so Yo uh, Yosef is the boy with the green stripes. And then we have Chang, he's got the blue and gray sweater. Um, and so here's the questions. Um, they ask you to check off how you think Yosef is feeling. So you could check more than one feeling. So there's more than one correct answer. Um, check off the skills Yosef can use to make a conversation with Chang. Um, Yosef can be assertive by check off the first calming down step you learned in the second step. We just went through that. Um, check off an example of positive self-talk that Adam could use to help himself calm down. Check off the answer that tells how to belly breathe. So we talked about that. Check off the best way to, to say Adam and Maddie's problem. So remember, we always want to say a problem without blaming. Check off the last problem solving step. So think about S-T-E-P. What does the P stand for? And check off the two words that best complete this sentence. Well, actually, it should be the one word. I have to fix that. Um, solutions to a problem should be safe and, 
And then we just talked about that. So that's your quiz. So make sure that you complete that. That'll be like your last second step grade, okay? Okay, let's move back into code.org. We are now up to lesson nine. So hopefully you've been keeping up with us. Um, so I'm going to go through this. Hopefully it won't be too long because I don't want to make the video too long because I know you do have the second step test that you're going to be doing this week. But I do want to keep up with the coding because we're only on lesson nine. And I don't know if we will get through all the lessons because it goes up to 19. So there's probably a good chance we will not. But at least we're, we're trying our best. Um, and I've even been thinking about like skipping ahead. Like, for example, we already did loops last week. So like I'm almost wondering if I should skip. Well, let's do, hmm. I know I'm like trying to think of the best way. And of course, you're more than welcome. Like if we don't do any of these lessons together, you can always just do them on your own just for fun to keep practicing with coding. It's just that we're at a limited time here. And so we don't always get to get everything done. But okay, so let me, I'm gonna just go with lesson nine and then we might skip ahead next week. All right, so I'm gonna shut my video off. So we're learning how to draw shapes with loops and this is a lot of fun. So let's watch this. Oh, oops, look what I just did. I did the video and then I just pressed continue and I skipped the video. That was great. Okay, here we go. You wouldn't even qualify for the race if you don't have people that are proficient in computer sciences because of how much data the cars collect and the necessity to be able to have people that can write programs to figure out how you can continue to build performance. In these puzzles, you'll be an artist that uses a pencil to draw different shapes, so wherever your artist goes, it will draw a line behind them. To move around the canvas, you'll use the move forward block. Here, the move forward block says move forward by 100 pixels. When we hit run, what happens? Just hang on one second. The artist moves forward a certain amount, and that amount is 100 pixels. Pixels are basically very tiny squares on your computer screen. One sec. The other block we have in this puzzle says turn right by 90 degrees. Okay. And when we drag that out, that makes our artist turn a certain amount. So you can play around with how far you want the artist to turn. This is a 90 degree turn. And this is a 120 degree turn. And remember, you can change these values by clicking the arrows next to the numbers for pixels and degrees. Enjoy drawing with your artist. <laughs> Okay, so let's move ahead now. Um, and now we're on level two. So it says, what a lovely day. Help the artist cover his flowers before the winter by moving forward by 60 pixels. So let's do the move forward by 60 pixels and let's see what happens. Woo so we're just starting out. It's pretty simple when you start out with the code. Add some beauty by repeating that step five times changing to a random color between each move. So let's try and do that. So they want you to repeat the step, okay, five times. And they want you to change to a random color. So put set random color, and they want you to do it five times. So there you go. Beautiful, great job. Okay, let's learn about loops. Here we are going to use the repeat block to help us say steps when we're programming our artist. We already have some blocks out on our stage, but they're just there to get us started. To loop those blocks four times to draw the whole square, we just drag out the repeat block and put the move forward and turn right blocks inside the repeat block. When we hit run, the artist will repeat those steps four times to complete the square. Okay, so hopefully you know about, everybody knows about loops because we, we did them a lot. So you guys are loop pros. So draw the colorful line five times again, this time using a repeat loop. Oh, isn't that funny? I already, I'm sorry, guys. I didn't even realize, but I already did the repeat loop the last time because I'm just so used to doing it. They wanted you to actually do this the last time. Move forward, set random color, Move forward, set random color. They wanted you to do that five times. I didn't even do that because I'm we're so programmed with loops, right? Because we know about loops already. So you guys can use the repeat block. It makes it easier. 
You can create this star by looping a sequence of move forward and turn right by 144 degree blocks. So we're going move forward and then we're going turn right by 144 and why don't we set a random color? And I wonder how many times we have to do this. We, well, we did one, two, three, four, five times. So we need to make the repeat block five to be able to do it. Beautiful star. And just to let you, you all know, if you're interested in art and design, um, graphic designers, they use, hang on one second. Okay, I'll be right there. Um, so... So graphic designers, they do can do this as their job. And so that might be something um, that you guys might be interested in for a career. And you do have to um, learn code for that. So that could be something that you might be interested in. Okay, so this time we're doing a loop. So it says use loops to draw this staircase. Each stair step is 50 pixels long and 50 pixels tall. And you will need to turn 90 degrees in each direction. So let's put a loop in and let's think about how many times we're gonna do this. One, two, three times. We're gonna move forward and we're gonna turn right by 90 to make our stair step. Oh, whoops. And no, we're not. <laughs> um, so because we're we're gonna we're going to turn right and then we're gonna move forward and then we're gonna turn left. So actually, um, I made a little bit of a mistake there. Sorry about that. Um, hang on, let me okay. So it should be forward right. And then it should be forward left, okay? And then if you run it, it will make the staircase, okay? So we just have um, four more levels and then we'll be done. So it says this staircase is much bigger, but it takes the same amount of code as the last puzzle. Fix this loop to complete the puzzle. So what do we think is wrong? They said repeat three times, but let's count how many stairs there are. One, two, three, four, five, there's six of them. So we really should be repeating it six times. Woohoo! great job. You guys are doing awesome. Okay, look for a pattern and make this code shorter using loops. Oh my gosh, look how long this code is. Move forward by 50, right by 99. Forward by 50, left by 99. Forward by 50, right by 99. So we can see how many times are we doing this. Well, one, two, three, four, five blocks are in the block sequence. And we did it one time. And then we did it again. Oh, wait, sorry, there's four blocks in it. Because it's move forward, right, move forward, left. So then we have move forward, right, move forward, left. There's another one. Then we do it again. So it looks like we're doing it one, two, three, four times. So what if I do this, if I put this into there and I do it four times, I can throw this all in the garbage and look how much shorter my code got, right? And then look, it does the same thing, but a lot less code, right? Okay, level 10 is a challenge puzzle. So obviously a little bit harder, but it says look for a pattern and make this code shorter using loops. So let's see our pattern. Move forward by 80, turn right by 45, set a random color. Move forward by 80, turn right by 45. So it's really just doing this. Oh my gosh, it's doing it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I think eight times. Wow. So I'm going to put this in here. I'm going to change this to eight, since it should repeat eight times. And I'm going to throw this all in the garbage. Look how much shorter the code got. So now I should be able to create the shape, but with a lot less code, right? And that's really our goal is to try to use the least amount of blocks possible. Okay, here's our last challenge for this lesson. So you can solve the puzzle by drawing the square with 200 pixel sides. So we know we're gonna be moving forward by 200 and a square has right angles, 90 degrees. So we'll be turning right by 90. How many sides does a square have? four sides. So we would repeat that four times. Put it in the repeat block, create your square, and you are done. Okay, so we're done with lesson nine now. I didn't want to give you a really long lesson, but what I would like to, I think what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make lesson 10. So I'm going to just write this down in my book. I'm going to make lesson 10 a bonus lesson 
So if you complete lesson 10, I will add to your grade for lesson nine um, an additional five bonus points, okay? So that means you could really get 105. So if you would like to get bonus points, you will do lessons nine and 10, because next week, I think for the sake of time, we're gonna skip ahead and probably go to lesson 12 so we could start learning about conditionals. Um, so lesson 10 is also loops. Um, it's something called the nested loop. And there is a video that explains it to you, but a nested loop is when you take a repeat block and you put it inside of another repeat block. So for example, if you were repeating something that was being repeated, so I, it might sound a little crazy, but you'll see in the levels, and, and I'm sure you guys will understand because you're smart and you'll pick up on it. So if you would like to do lesson 10, you can get five additional bonus points, but lesson nine is for your homework, okay? Um, so we're really just doing this for the sake of time because we don't have very many weeks left in the school year, and I do want to expose you to different um, types of coding puzzles, not just the same thing over and over again, okay? All right, so don't forget, you do have the second step quiz. It's third grade, second step final exam. And then you have code.org lesson number nine for your homework this week, okay? If you have any questions, um, let me know. Um, otherwise, we'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys. Um, see you next time, okay? Bye, see you. Bye, guys, see you.